thank you for your interesting question, which brings the topic of uh, internet, which it, it, everybody is interested in nowadays, and uh, how do we deal with it from an Islamic point of view? Um, recently, this the rise of bitcoins has, you know, made everybody think, wow, this may be the alternative. You know, just sleep with at ease. This is not the alternative. It's just a l just as air bubble as anything else. It's not backed by anything. We have seen systems like this before. The only good thing about Bitcoin that differs from the others and their failure, the consequent failure, is that Bitcoin has a limited number of issuing. And that is, that is the difference between everything else. But uh, I think it's just a matter of time. Soon they will start coming with something else. And um, it has no guarantee that uh, when the things start turning sour for whatever reason, the whole thing just doesn't fall in upon itself, like we have, we have seen before with similar currencies like this. Um, there is no reason why we can prevent, from an Islamic point of view, anybody from using anything, including bitcoins. Uh, you're free. Essentially, what Islamic law tells you is that don't be, don't overimpose on others things that they are not allowed, neither do it yourself. And um, as long as uh, somebody is offering something on the internet and uh, it's not something forbidden, you can buy. Uh, so that's from the point of view of personal respect and personal morality. But if you think about uh, what we have been discussing here for the last uh, few hours, is that we want to bring the Muslim Ummah from, away from the boundaries, from the shackles of Riva. The question is, can internet help us to do that? Is, is this the way we get rid of the central banks? Shopping online. The matter is much more profound. And the issues are much more, more, much more larger than that. So strategically speaking, this is a side issue, number one. Second, is this side issue interesting in terms of, for example, could we understand a marketplace could be done on, online? Yes, it could, but with certain conditions. Again, this is to do with Islamic law. You have to guarantee it that the person who is selling the goods has them in their possession. Because if not, it's simply not allowed. It is forbidden to sell, in particular, food or money. And there is another list of things that they are highly liquidity or involved in daily purchase that is not allowed, is forbidden to sell without taking possession. So it means that um, the existence of uh, internet <coughs> marketplaces will have to include a system to verify the possession of the items that they are selling in order to be Islamic. The logic, in my view, is you don't start with electronic market, but you start with physical markets and then you give to these physical markets electronic capabilities. Like for example, I perfectly understand the possibility of having our marketplace and then uh, put cameras that it means that I can verify that the physical goods are there. And then I say, give me this. And then I have a system whereby, you know, Islamic Express sends the goods to whatever you want to send it to via helicopters. You know, it, that doesn't bother me. It, the key is that the law must be preserved at every given point and is not negotiable. And technology can, I think in my view, it can help in certain cases, but not always. And never to, like for example, in the case of money, you cannot, uh, you cannot surrender the physical uh, coin with some electronic form of it, just as simple as that. Because otherwise we are coming back into where we started with, which is somebody promises you to pay some money, which suddenly one day decides he's not going to give it to you. We cannot be 100% dependent on electronic currency. I don't believe so. I think the safest place to have your gold dinar is your pocket. And I have created e-dinar. I created the first electronic payment system in the world based on gold dinar. And I'm the one telling you this. Don't use my system unless you really, really need it. 
In the meanwhile, keep it in your pocket. That's the safest thing that you can do. Why? Because I truly believe that. <laughs> because it's, uh, it's, it's the only way that we can guarantee that the independence is going to be sustained. If you want to bring electronic payment systems, yes, it's possible. You can do it with a mobile phone, et cetera, et cetera. But why do you want to have your gold dinar tucked in somebody else's vault? If you need it, do it. But if you don't need it, your pocket is the safest place. So electronic, one day we will do electronic dinars. There is a space for that. And you can do all the payments with online. With full loose quantities, small quantities, it can be done. We can have electronic marketplaces. We can have electronic kirat. Electronic kirat is something that it will work very well, actually. You know, because all you are doing is, is to, to invite people to invest in particular agents. And uh, these agents, on, the, on, on their behalf, they will participate in a kirat activity that it can be monitored online. We can have, a, a, in my view, a kirat and e kirat will will be essentially an auditing system, an online audit, auditing system that allows that you invest directly with the with the agent. So all this thing can happen. Uh, we keep uh, again. I wouldn't like to see an e kirat when the kirat is not occurring physically. <laughs> uh, I see all the electronic possibilities as a backup to the physical reality of coins, markets, caravans, etc., etc. That is the only little bit that I consider worth saying. And then uh, in regard to whether uh, the thieves in the future, I think you didn't say the word thief, but I think I understood you, uh, they will become millionaires hacking. Well, maybe. Uh, if that happens, I wish uh, the Muslims become good hackers. <laughs>